Howdy folks, Kerbo here, and welcome to Chrom, which is an electronic simulator. So I wanted to make a quick video, just kind of how to get started, because some people might have picked this up thinking it looked neat, but don't really have an electronics background. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a basic circuit going, show how the power supply works, what breadboards are, that kind of thing. So let's dive in. Up here in structure, we've got uh, breadboards. You can put components on. Then we've got these uh, power rails. So we'll see how each of those works. So we're gonna add a breadboard. And when you add anything, the square, you can move it around in X and Y. You can drag in just one direction with the little arrows. I'm not sure what, okay, this one does rotate. Some of the components don't rotate. <laughs> so I was a little confused by that, but that, that will actually rotate. I don't want that to be misaligned. So we're just gonna plop that down there. So if you're not familiar with breadboards, this is just a quick way to put circuits together by sticking the leads in here. So you can see this row one here. These are all connected electrically, and then these are all connected electrically. It might make more sense if I used a wire. So all those are connected, all those are connected, etc. And then all these are connected, all these are connected, like so. So if you want to get rid of those, uh, you have to close that window and just click, click the little trash can icon. I think we're going to be getting keyboard shortcuts at some point, but we don't have those as of this recording. So that's your breadboard, and you can actually stack these together. So if we add another one, just drag it away and then back towards it, and you'll see it'll snap right there. So you can get more space. But for our purposes, uh, we're just going to use one, and I'll put down one of the power rails to show how those work. So these are similar but a little bit different. In this case, you can see the, the red line and the blue line. They're all connected this way. So you can hook your power up here, and then you can branch off from any of these lines. So we'll be using that to get some power going. So let's make a little basic circuit with just an LED, light emitting diode, and you can actually read about this stuff here. So we're gonna have a red LED, and let's just pop it right here. The first place you click, will be the positive lead. You click there, that's the, the negative lead. Now LEDs are uh, current driven devices. So if you just hook this up to power, it would probably blow that up. So we need a current limiting resistor. And you can use Ohm's law and figure all this out. Per LED, what's it, what its max current is, uh, a pretty safe number is 220 ohms. So we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna put this resistor here which will connect to the ground. And then I'm gonna come over about four spaces, which I know works out about right just from doing this in real life. And then we're gonna connect up some wires. So you can use whatever color you want, but convention red is uh, positive voltage and black is ground or green is ground. But it doesn't matter as far as the simulator is concerned. So we're gonna take a wire from this resistor Run right up here to what will be our ground rail. Then we're going to take a red wire. We're going to hook it from the positive lead right up here to one of the positive inputs. So now we have a little circuit and that LED will light up if we had power. So to add power, come up here to our input. You can see we have a 12 volt power supply and that's actually adjustable. You can adjust the voltage. And then we have a signal generator. And we have my cell phone, which I forgot to put on vibrate. Sorry about that. And you can read about that here. So we just click add and we're going to scoot that over. Now the power supply is a little bit different as far as adding it. So you put it where you want and then you click position. And then it's going to want you to connect the wires. So you see the little connect plus there. It's a little hard to see, especially at 1440p. But you can see the wires sticking out of the red. So red is positive. So we're going to plop that right there. You can see it's got a little wire sticking now out of the black or ground. I'm gonna stick that right on the negative. Beautiful. And then you click finish. Don't forget to do that. I keep closing this and then all that goes away. So click finish. Now we have a power supply. So far we've been using the, what's it called? Interact function, no select. We've been using the select. So to interact and to turn this on and adjust the voltage, we want to go to the little interact, the little hand guy. Now if we click on the switch, see we have an LED that's lit up. 
Just that simple. And then if you click and drag on this knob and go back and forth, and you can see the current's changing. It's using less current because of Ohm's law in this resistor. Uh, but we'll set it back at five volts. It's a pretty standard. You can see it's drawing 12 milliamps. That's, that's quite a bit. Depending on your LED, you'd have to check the data sheet uh, to see for sure. If we go back to select, uh, I don't know that this says, oh, it does have max current. It's 30 milliamp. All right, cool. So we're fine. We're well within the limits. And you can set that to match whatever you might be using. IRL. Okay, so we have an LED. That's not terribly exciting. Uh, what else can we do that's pretty simple? Let's get rid of this. And let's have a transistor on here. See if I can remember my, my transistor stuff. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be on the positive rail. So we want a PNP. And I'm not going to go into transistor theory. There's plenty of other videos out there for that. So we're going to add this guy. And we want the emitter to line up with the positive lead. So it's hooked up to there. All right, go back to our wires. I'm gonna choose red. And then our collector, here's a little bit of advanced wire placement. So if I click here, the wire's gonna start there. Now if I right click over here, it's gonna allow me to curve. And then I just come up to here and left click again. And that'll put in a, a bent wire. I hope that makes sense. So right click makes corners and it tells you that here. That's how that works. So now if I turn this on, we don't get an LED light. Nothing, nothing's happening. That's because this transistor is acting like a switch. So we need a little bit of current on the base to make the, uh, the current flow through there. So we want to tie that to ground with resistor. We'll use 1K. That should work fine. We click here, come over four spaces, plop that there. And then I want to actually use a switch. So you click the little drop down. These are like the main things. You click the little drop down, you get more options. So I want to go over to this little push button switch, tactile switch, and we'll click add. And this should be able to bridge the gap. I hope they fix that. Like on a real breadboard, these legs are long enough that it will bridge the gap. Uh, I wanted to put that, yeah, right there. So this kind of switch, you can see how they kind of go into the body. So you can think it's going to bridge between these two. I'm pretty sure that has how that works. We'll find out. So we're going to take a black wire then off of this part of the switch. And we'll use our little corner thing again. So right click and then up to the ground. So now if I did this right, I'm doing this live. I haven't tested this. <laughs> if I did this right, when we push the button, the LED will come on. So let's go back to interact, turn on our power, and then push the button. Yay! So when I push this button down, it joins these two halves of the switch, which connects via this current limiting resistor, the base of the transistor to ground. That allows current to flow. So the current can then flow through the transistor, through the LED, back. So there you go. And then you can just build on from there. You got all these different components. You can read about them, try out some schematics you can find online. Uh, but that's the basics of getting started, how to get a power supply going, how to interact with stuff. Hope this was useful. I'll probably do some more content on this in the future. Let me know what you think about Chrome. If you've given it a try, let me know down in the comments and happy circuit building. Thanks for watching. Take care.